Good morning. This is Pastor Seth for Sunday Morning Bible Study. We're going to continue our study on faith from Hebrews chapter 11. Hope you've had a wonderful morning so far and you're prepared, ready to go for today's Bible study. Take your Bibles this morning and turn to Hebrews chapter number 11. Hebrews chapter number 11 and we'll start in verse number 1 and work down to verse number 6. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that these that the that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it yet be he yet he being dead yet speaketh. Verse number five and six is our text this morning. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him for for before his translation, before his translation. He had this testimony that he pleased God, for by but without faith is it impossible to please Him, for he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He is a, a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Let's pray this morning, and we'll jump into the Scripture. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you now. We thank you for this time of Bible study. Lord, we thank you this. Thank you for this time and your Scripture that we can look at faith and having a life of faith, specifically this morning from Enoch. Lord, I pray that it would be an encouragement to those that are hearing. I pray that you keep us strong, Lord. We'd be faithful servants for you. In your name we do pray. Amen. Last week we saw the faith of uh, Abel and how he was justified by faith. And uh, today we're going to look at Enoch. Enoch is an Old Testament character. In Hebrews chapter number 11, verses 5 and 6, we come to the amazing account of Enoch, a man who walked with God. The Bible says that one day, while Enoch was walking with God, uh, he was translated. He did not taste death. <clears throat> we meet this man Enoch, first of all, in Genesis chapter number uh, 5. Genesis chapter number 5. Turn to Genesis chapter number 5 with me. And we'll see the first account here with Enoch. Genesis chapter number 5 and verse uh, 21 to 24. And Enoch lived sixty and five years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah three hundred years and begat sons and daughters. And all of the days of Enoch were three hundred and sixty and five years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. We see here that the Bible says that Enoch walked with God. No doubt he heard wonderful things about creation, about God, and about what happened to the human race. And then one day at age 365, God translated Enoch to be with him. He called him out. He took him from his present life to be with God. One truth we understand from the story that is God has more for his children in the future. Enoch represents, is a representation for us as an entire generation of believers who are going to be living on this earth and then suddenly they are going to disappear and be caught up to meet God at the coming of the Savior. This is known as the rapture of the church. It's a picture of the rapture of the church. And one day uh, when the Lord decides He's going to call his church home. We will be standing around doing our things, and the Lord, the trumpet will sound, and we will be raptured out of here. Our clothes, our, our, our earthly possessions will not come with us. They'll be left behind, and we will meet the Savior, Jesus Christ, in the air. And that's the rest of eternity beginning. But we see that Enoch is a picture of this. Now today I want to look at three areas of Enoch's life that will help us to live a life of faith that will help us live a life of faith. First of all, we see here that Enoch pleased God. 
This first area is Enoch pleasing God. We can please God. The Bible records in, in Hebrews chapter number five, 11, verse number 5, back to our text, Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 5, that it says here, uh, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Enoch pleased God. He pleased God. Are we pleasing God with our life today? Is our life pleasing unto him? Or does God look down and see us living our Christian life, and he is not pleased with us? I'm sure there are many things that God's not pleased with over the past 35 years of my life, coming up to 35 years of my life. But my, my desire today, the, my desire every morning when I wake up, is that my life would please God. What can I do to please God? We see here that He pleased God. This is a man who pleased God. The Lord reveals to us the secret of how Enoch pleased God. That's found in verse number 6. Look at verse number 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The key to living a life pleasing unto God is that we live a life of faith in God. We have to live a life of faith in God. Many people are engaged in Christian service. Many people are religious. Many people go to church. Many people give tithes. Many people give offerings. Many people see, uh, get baptized. Many people on the outside walk the Christian walk and live the Christian life. And they think, and we see them, and we think they are pleasing God. But in reality, they are not pleasing God because they don't have a life of faith. We have to have a life of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to please God. That's the first area we see of uh, the life of faith. We have to please God. And we can only do that through faith. Pleasing God through faith. So the first area is uh, uh, Enoch pleased God. We see the second area, Enoch passed over. Enoch passed over. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter number 11 verse 5, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. The word translate means to carry up over or to bear over. The idea here is trying to cross a wall, trying to cross over an obstacle when you have your partner, your person you're with, your, your friend. You cannot, for me I'm fat, I can't just jump over a two meter wall. I have to have help. So the idea is one person is helping the other person over that wall to get over the obstacle. That is what the word here to translate means. It means to carry up, to be lifted up, or to be borne over that obstacle. In Colossians chapter number 13, uh, one, chapter number 1, verse 13, and also in John chapter number 5, verse 24, I encourage you to look those verses up, we learn that we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness and death to God's kingdom of light. The moment we are born again, we are saved through the blood of Jesus and faith in Christ. We are translated, we are born over, we are picked up, we are carried from the kingdom of darkness and death and damnation, the kingdom of the devil, unto the kingdom of Jesus Christ, the kingdom of light. We are born again into the family of God. We see here that they, we are translated. It's a picture of that translation. Just like the rapture is the picture, is the translation, Enoch was the picture of the rapture of the church. It shows us how we are passed over. We are translated into the kingdom of God's family. The power of death has been broken by the Lord Jesus Christ. By faith in Christ, we have been translated from the kingdom of death into God, the kingdom of God's dear son. Enoch's translation is a beautiful illustration of God's miraculous work in us and each and every one of his believers in his word in his faith each and every one of us that have put our faith and trust in the Lord we are an example that is the illustration Enoch was literally taken to heaven without experiencing death 
we as believers have literally passed from death unto life. Just as he was literally, truthfully, honestly translated, no longer living, but not dying straight into the kingdom, into the presence of the Lord, we are literally passed from death unto life. If we believe his, this teaching that we have uh, eternal life in Christ, we must have more than an academic understanding of this. We must have such faith in God that we enjoy the invisible now, that we live victoriously with no threat of fear or death. When we realize that when God calls us home, we are just going from a, an earthly, a temporal body to a spiritual place in heaven. And we, when we realize that, we don't have to have a fear of death. We don't have to fear about this coronavirus killing us. We don't have to fear about anything uh, ending our life quickly because we know that when we die, we go into the presence of the Lord. We have the rest of eternity to live with the Savior. It's just a physical body that ends. It's like a, a chapter of the Bible. The chapter ends and the book of the Bible ends and we open up the next chapter, the next book, and we see what's next in the program for God's plan of the earth. It's just a, a, just, just a temporary life we're living. And we are going to live for the eternity with Christ if we're saved. Enoch, first of all, he pleased God. Second of all, he passed over and then thirdly this morning, Enoch prophesied to his generation. We can prophesy to our current generation. There's a, tri there's a, there, there's a rapture of the church happening next. That's the next timeline, next uh, date on the calendar of the timeline of the, of the Bible. We're waiting for the trumpet to sound. We're waiting for the church to be raptured. Until we do that, until that happens, we are here to work for the Savior. We're here to work for the Lord to tell others to prophesy to this generation. We see here Enoch preached about the coming of the Lord. The Lord tells us this in Jude chapter number, or verse number 14 and 15. Jude, verse number 14 and 15, the Bible says, And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of, the, of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints, to execute judgment upon them, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. We see this prophecy was that the Lord was coming, and the Bible says, with ten thousands of his saints, to execute judgment upon all. It makes me think of the coming tribulation, the time in the at the end of the world when God judges the earth and God judges the lost folks that are here on earth and this time of tribulation that we see in Revelation, the book of Revelation. And, it th and, and if we simply sit down and think about it, I don't want to be a part of that, that time. I wouldn't want anybody to be a part of that time when God is judging someone that doesn't need to be judged. If, if I'm saved, and I am, then I won't be a part of that. If someone gets saved, they don't have to be a part of that. They don't have to endure that tribulation. They don't have to endure that time of judgment. We are here to preach and prophesy of that coming judgment that they don't have to be a part of. That's what Enoch was doing. He walked with God in a wicked world. He prophesied for the Lord and told about the coming of the Lord. He spoke up for God in his wicked world. Why did he do that? Because he had a life of faith. On the other hand, why don't we tell others about this coming tribulation? Why don't we tell others about heaven? Why don't we tell others about hell? Because we don't have a life of faith, and we focus on ourselves, and making money, and doing the things we want to do that please us when we don't please God, and we don't live that life of faith. How do we have faith like Enoch? Live the life of faith. Please God with our lives. Pass over and prophesy. Do we have a life that pleases God? Are we ready or are we prepared 
for this crossing over when God raptures us. Because when we stand before God one day, we will give an account for our life. What we did for Christ or what we didn't do for Christ. We won't be sent to heaven or hell off of those things because you have to get saved before you meet God. But you will be judged and the rewards will come or they won't come. And are you prophesying to your generation? Are we prophesying generation to our generation? Are we living a life of faith like Enoch? The moment, at any moment, God could call us home and we stand before him. Will we be able to stand for it before the Lord and give him a good report? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this time in Bible study in the life of Enoch and his faith for you and in you. I pray that each and every one of us this morning would have a life of faith and continue to walk faithfully for you. Bless the hour to come, the next hour to come with the preaching of your word. We love you. In your name we do pray. Amen.